Welcome to our next session of New Approaches to Seizure First Aid. Here we're going to be talking about responding to seizures with an intervention. So this is kind of the new part of Seizure First Aid. My name is Patty Osborne Schaefer and I'm joined by Sue Welby from the Epilepsy Foundation of New England. So when would you do an intervention? If a person has an implanted device such as a vagus nerve stimulator, for any seizure, the magnet for the seizure may be part of their seizure first aid and we'll show you that in a minute on how to use it. Other times people might have seizures that occur in clusters or have increased bouts or periods of seizures. This might be um, times where they know that if they have two or three seizures in a row that the tendency might be for having more seizures or maybe potentially going to a seizure emergency unless they do something to stop it. So now we want to do something. We want to have an intervention such as giving a medication or a therapy to help stop or abort the seizure and prevent that emergency, prevent that trip to the emergency room. Some people live in very rural areas and getting to an emergency room might take a long time. So a person could get individualized instructions from their doctor to say, you know, your child normally doesn't have a tonic-clonic seizure. So if they do, we'd like you to use this therapy early on and then call the ambulance because by the time they get there, they don't want to wait that long because you live in kind of a faraway area. So every person who is prescribed a rescue therapy needs to talk to their doctor, the nurse, or the provider to find out what is it, what's the dose I use, how do I do it, when do I administer it, for what kind of seizure in my child, my loved one, or my friend, however it is, and then do I give one dose or should I give more than one dose, and how do I do that? All of this information is found right here on epilepsy.com. But what we want to do is to give you a little bit of demonstration on how you would do these. Okay, so to start with, let's think about the person who has a vagus nerve stimulator. Now, the VNS is in a device that's implanted under the skin, generally on the left side of the chest, sometimes underneath the arm. And there's a small electrolyte underneath the skin that goes up and attaches to the vagus nerve in the neck. Right? Now, when you go to the, the hospital, your doctor's office or nurse's office, they're going to program it to deliver stimulation at certain times. Right? But there's an also what we call a magnet feature, so that if you swipe the magnet over a person's chest, it will deliver an extra burst of stimulation. So if I was having a seizure and I felt it, I could swipe the generator, I mean swipe the magnet right over the generator and it would give me a burst of stimulation. Or if someone saw someone else having a seizure, they could do it for them. So Susan, let's say you've come across this child. You know, you're, you're a school teacher and you come across this child. Show me how you would use the magnet on them. Okay, this would be part of this child's seizure action plan. And I would start the left side under the armpit and slowly count one 1,000 as I swipe to the center of the chest just once. I only do it once. I wait and I observe and I continue to watch the child to see if the seizure is coming to an end. And if it is not, um, after a minute, I believe we could wait. Is that correct, yeah, Patty? And, and the doctor, the, the person's uh, doctor might say, wait 30 seconds, wait 60 seconds or whatever, give another swipe. So you so, first want to make sure what, what they've asked you to do. So we're looking at their seizure action plan and knowing ahead of time what we're responding. So if to, after that single swipe, I would do a second one after waiting that period of time. Let's say it's been one minute. And I would come again from the under the left armpit, one 1,000 slowly moving to the center of the chest. I do not want to leave the magnet over the chest, do I, Patty, or go around in a circle like so. Yeah, I just want to come once over. Very key point. So the magnet has two functions. One is to help stop or abort the seizure. Now it doesn't happen for everybody, but ideally it does. It'll you help stop it, make it shorter, or maybe lessen in intensity. But if you hold the magnet over the person's generator, and you do that, and you hold it there for at least six seconds, it turns the stimulation off. So whatever you've programmed in there to deliver it 
it won't give it. Now the good news about that is if you're having side effects from it and you're wondering is this the stimulator, by holding it over you can see if the side effects go away, right? And that's generally what the purpose is. When you're providing it for seizure first aid, as Susan said, if you're rubbing it over it, the device might think you're telling it to stop. Right, so the single swipe is, is the best way to do it. It is the best way. Patty, I have a question for you. Will sure. it restart on its own or is a visit to the doctor required? Oh, great question. You don't need to do anything. The magnet is an extra burst of stimulation. So the generator is already programmed to deliver stimulation the way the doctor and nurse already programmed it. So this is just an additional burst. And it doesn't hurt anybody. You can't give too much stimulation this way by just swiping at the time of a seizure. So there's another device that's become available in the past few years, and that's called RNS system, or responsive, neurosis, responsive neurostimulation made by Neuropace. And this is an implanted device that's actually put into the skull, and that electrodes are placed right on the brain. Why I'm bringing this up right now is that there is a magnet that's given to someone with an RNS system, but it works very differently. It's not used to trigger stimulation. In fact, the, the electrodes on the brain actually pick up the seizure activity directly, and it tells the system to deliver the stimulation without you doing anything. But the person with it is given a magnet, so if you have a seizure, or you have something that you think is a seizure, even though the system does it on its own, you can take the magnet and swipe it right over your head and it kind of marks it for storage into the system and then you're gonna have a re what we call a remote system or a little laptop at home where it automatically gets sent to your doctor's office by, by internet. So I, I bring this to your attention so that it is a device, there is a magnet, but it's not done to stop a seizure, but is a part of your care if you have the RNS system.